What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 38 of On Shape. Um, we're going to be building our Talenta boxes today. So we're going to go from a top-down view of our Talenta box and looking at going with all those pieces. Now, I am going to be skimming past a couple of the usually build-up videos to this, um, CAMs in particular, parametric constraints. But I know with me and a couple of other teachers, uh, I'd like to maybe have a Talenta built before Christmas break. So... Let's try it out. First thing we're going to do is we're going to build our bottom of our automata box and then we're going to build kind of from there. So first thing we're going to do is click on sketch and we're going to click on this top plane and hit view normal too, like we usually do. And we're going to do a, uh, let's do a center point rectangle. Now center point rectangles because the center of my rectangle is going through my origin plane. So this is kind of an important moment or important detail. Let's go ahead and dimension these side boxes are going to be 4 inches by uh, 4.5 inches in total. I'll go ahead and hit the green, green check mark and now since for the rest of my time I shouldn't need these planes um, but I'm going to go ahead and make those invisible for now. We're going to go ahead and extrude this up the thickness of our um, of our MDF and that is a quarter inch, so 0 0.125. We're going to go ahead and name this part, so I'm going to rename it as bottom and I'm going to right click and let's go ahead and assign this material to it. Now I haven't done much with materials but you should be able to type in MDF, medium density fiberboard, and then hit the green check mark. Now the problem is, is that even though it's given the material of it, because this is an Onshape education account, it doesn't give it its appearance. So I'm also going to edit the appearance as well, and I'm going to do kind of a light beige color to give that MDF look. Okay, there we go. We're looking great. We're going to continue to move on. Next thing we're going to do is click on Sketch. We're going to click on our face right here. We're going to hit View Normal 2, and we're going to do our three side walls kind of all at the same time. So I'm going to click on uh, center, or sorry, corner rectangle now because I do want our, my uh, walls to kind of already be lined up with uh, what we have going on over here. So let's go ahead and do that. That way it has that geometric constraint of putting it in the corner. Now if I put these uh, lines in here. We should go for the quarter inch thickness. And so see it's already got that four inches in for me. So we're good there. So that means all I need to do on this other dimension is this width right here. Let's try that again. And we got a quarter inch as well. Everything's nice and black. It's fully constrained. Let's go ahead and just draw a line across the top here. And uh, oh, actually let's do a rectangle right in here. All right, that dimension is already given four inches across the top. All I need to do is dimension this side piece right here, which is going to be a quarter inch again. Now I know I'm doing this particularly fast, is because these extrudes should be pretty quick for you to do. I am just going to be start making our box from the bottom up, and we want our box to be made correctly. So the first thing we find out is that a lot of students are going to uh, do this mistake, which I'm doing right here intentionally. And that is creating this as an add rather than a new. And also the problem I've seen some students doing is that even though it's a new, they're not separate parts. And so when you're creating these parts, make sure, make sure, make sure if it's a part, it's labeled as its own part. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring those up, those two sidewalls up four inches. Reuse this sketch and bring up that back wall another four inches. Okay, so we got our sidewalls, we got our bottom. Let's go ahead and name them. So let's go ahead and rename this as side. Let's. Uh, Deselect that. 
rename. This is going to be side. Let's call this right side R for right. And then rename this. Let's put side L. Okay. And then we have our back. Okay. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. All we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to give all these properties, but I'm going to do the rest of the properties at the same time. So let's click on sketch. Let's go ahead and click on this top plane right here and hit view normal too. And let's do one last square. So this last square is going to go all the way across the top. Uh, dimension should be thrown there automatically for me. So we're going to extrude this on up as a new piece with a thickness of a quarter inch again. And this should give me my three side walls and my top. Okay, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're looking good so far. What I'm gonna do now is, for my rest of my pieces, we're gonna assign those properties and um, those materials and colors for them as well. So let's assign the material. Let's do MDF. Click the green check mark. And you notice I've selected all of these at the same time. So it's giving all of those, those properties. I'm gonna right click again, hit edit appearance. We're gonna click, make sure we click on the same colors we did before. And there we go. We've officially made our box. What I'm gonna do is rename this last part and we'll call this back. And we've already got our Tom to box looking good. Okay, the only problem is, is that this is not in our assembly in our assembly environment. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is, as I create my bits and pieces to my automata box, let's go ahead and make our assemblies while we're at it. And so I'm going to go ahead and click over on assembly, and I'm going to click insert, and we're going to go ahead and bring in part one studio. Okay, hit the green check mark, and we're done. We run into a little bit of problem though, because my parts, even though they're aligned up in there correctly, they are not attached. So the very first thing I want you to do is I want you to kind of move them out of the way. By moving them out of the way, we know when I select my mates that I'm not accidentally selecting on something else. Okay, and then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on my bottom and fix it. It means it cannot move. So as I'm doing this correctly, if I try to move it, it won't let me. That's because it's fixed. Okay, so now let's add in our fastened mates here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the outside of this wall here. So I'm going to hover over to this outside wall here and go to this bottom corner. So this bottom corner is going to be on that corner right there. We hit the green check mark and we're already looking good. We're gonna do it a couple more times. I'm gonna hover over to the other side, go to this bottom corner here, zoom in a little bit, find my top corner there, hit the green check mark and we're looking, cooking with grease. Okay, we might run into a little bit of problem though. Let's see if this last one will work, at least the rear. So we'll put that corner in with that corner at the green check mark and there we go if you're having a hard time with your fasten mates it's usually because I find a couple of things one is that as you're hovering over it will select the planes for you and so you got to be able to learn how to slowly uh, manipulate what side of your part you actually want to use another thing I was able to figure out is that if you hold down shift you can have this face selected and it's locked in. So if I hold down the shift key, it'll keep that face in there. So if you have a hard time, you can use the shift key to help you out, hopefully. Okay, and last one, but surely not least, we're gonna go to this plane right here and hold down the shift key, click on that corner, because this corner is going to be attached to that corner. Uh-oh, did I do something right? Nope, I did not. Let's deselect that. I selected the wrong corner. There we go. This corner is going to be on this top edge right here. 
There we go. It's on top, not inside. All right, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We've officially made our box with all of the assembly constraints of making sure that our walls of our box do not move, the top does not move, and the bottom does not move as well. And so what I really like with this top-down build is that we're gonna add more and more pieces onto our box here, and so that means we know all of our parts are going to fit. Then when we go into the assembly environment, we know since that they fit, all we need to do is throw in our fastened constraints, or sorry, our mates, and then we can figure out uh, how to automate it and to get the crankshaft and all those other pieces in there as well. Alrighty guys, I'm super excited for these videos. Let me know if they're help. Three, uh, please, 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 if you have any questions, throw them down in the comment section. I'll reach out to you whenever I can. Uh, and then if these videos have been helpful for you to you, please like and subscribe. I'm staying up usually later than I typically do uh, to make these videos. And so it is super cool to see the channel grow. And you guys have been part of that. This is awesome. And I'll take care. Um, and I'll see you guys later.